how has your work been? Uh, welcome again to our lunchtime learning session. And today I have with me the wonderful Sandra Garlic. So Sandra Garlic MBE, very impressive, is the founder of Woman Who, and Sandra helps women who uh, to, to, to power up women in business to power up their personal brand and get visible. And she does this through her academy and awards. And um, you also produce an annual book as well, Sandra. But um, we'll talk about that later. But how are you? It's lovely to have you here. I'm really well. And apologies, anyone, if my dog starts barking, because that's the nature of what, where we are right now. So uh, absolutely. It's absolutely, he's been barking all morning, but he's on a warning now to stay silent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, Sandra, I'm sure everybody here, um, it, you know, wants to power up their personal brand. It's what it's what we it's what we all need. Um, so so well, tell us first how you started with how did, where did Woman Who came from, come from? What you doing and where, where did you kind of suddenly decide I'm going to start this 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 project well it's five years old this year and um if, but if you go back 10 years before that so 15 years ago um I was working in a solicitor's practice I was a qualified solicitor went into my bosses six male and one female partnership and said I've got this great idea for women in business I said we can invite 30 women we could give them a late breakfast after they've dropped their kids at school we can give them croissants and yogurts and fruit and feed them tea and coffee and a fresh orange juice I said and we can have inspirational speakers I said, can I do it? And they said, we'll have to take it to the partnership meeting. And they came back to me and they said, after a few comings and goings, they said, um, we've decided not to go ahead with it because we don't think women in business will take off. Oh, God. <laughs> So I went back to my office and apart from handing in my notice and setting up my own firm, um, I bought the domain name for Woman Who and I mapped out when I get an idea I map it Great out name. in my ideas book um, I bought the domains and thought I'm going to do something with this but I wasn't quite sure and ended up starting a solicitor's practice and 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 carrying on with that but I'd never forgotten the idea uh, and when in January 2016 I slipped on the only day it snowed uh, where I live and oh. broke my ankle <laughs> really oh. badly it gave me the time to stop and realize actually I wasn't enjoying what I was doing I'd merged my firm I was working in somebody else's firm it wasn't me I was stuck behind a desk that definitely isn't me and um, I felt that I just was ready for something new and I went back to that idea and while I was laid up in plaster and on crutches and I said to my son look I think I'm going to run this awards we'll do it as a one-off you can help me um, and literally 90 days later I delivered my first awards which ended up being the first and we're going into our sixth awards this year Wow, that's amazing. So fantastic. So, so, I mean, that must have um, meant that you had to take that step of power up, powering up your own brand and your own visibility. So what did you do to get started? Well, way back when I, I mean, being a solicitor wasn't my first career. I was in sales and marketing. So I was a bit of a hybrid solicitor. Wow. Um, so I, after I'd had my children got divorced, left and decided I needed a career and qualified as a solicitor. And one of the first things they did when I qualified was they said, you've got to go out and get your own clients. But they didn't tell you how to do it. So I started networking and I realised that everybody looked the same. Everybody sat in packs. Everybody dressed the same. Everybody, uh, there wasn't many women out networking at the time. It was lots of men in suits. And I had to find a way to stand out. So I started public speaking. Um, and that started to attract attention and I started sharing my story because my story wasn't a straightforward one. So I found that people were attracted to me, not because of what I did, but because of what I shared. And it was a very unique way of, and I didn't realise at the time, but I was building my personal brand. And I started my LinkedIn profile back in 2005. I mean, wow, that's, that's a, what, that 16 years ago. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I was working my LinkedIn profile back then. So I had my social Thank media you. presence. I had my um, social media. I had my personal presence, I networking, and I was public speaking. And then I started writing. And that's what I teach now is, is the three elements, you know, the, the sort of the, the public speaking, the writing and the awards. And they're my sort of three main um, 
main points really for for powering up your personal brand yeah fantastic so so okay so where, so where did we begin what 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 can we what's the first step that everybody should take I think the first step is is to start thinking about your story your journey so I, I always say to people and with whether you're entering awards whether you're thinking about sharing your story on stage or whether you're sharing it in print and there's lots of different ways to share it in print and Lucy you're the expert on books but there are other ways as well of course. Um, but the first thing really is to find your story and a lot of people say to me a lot of women say to me but I haven't done anything I haven't achieved anything I haven't got a story and that's what why I developed the academy really was to to help these women find their story because the first thing you can do is once you've found your story you can share elements of it you can share the whole story you can share sections small snippets and you can repurpose that content everywhere and share a little bit of you because we all know that people buy from people they know like and trust um, and social media is a key example if you share something a little bit personal you tend to get a lot more interaction than if you just share something that says buy my stuff uh, and people like to know about people. We're nosy by our very characteristics. We love to know about people and what they get up to. So um, yes, it's finding your story, breaking that story down and then finding the elements and then mapping it into a journey, but a journey of peaks and troughs. So everybody go, everybody's life, nobody's life just goes like that unless you're very, very, very unique and very lucky. But most people go with this roller coaster journey and it's, it's what's called the dip theory. And you build people up and you take them down, you build them up again, you take them down. Watch a film, what happens in a film? They take you on a roller coaster journey and it's either a happy ending or a tragic ending, whatever it is, but they take you on a journey. And that's what sharing your story is all about. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, do you think that um, women are more reluctant to share their own stories, perhaps than men are? Is this why we need to have more, um, need to be encouraged to do it? Or, or do men have a different way of, of, of sort of bigging themselves up, if you like? Uh, I have noticed and I'm not criticizing any man at all. I really like men and I, you know, I've got some really good friends and I do work outside of what I do with women in business. I do work in a very male environment in football. But I do find that men tend to only tell you the good bits. They tell you when they've had a success, when they've got a lead, when they've got a sale. Whereas women in a, in a group of women will tell you the real story. They'll tell you about the challenges they've had. They'll tell you about, you know, the setbacks. They'll tell you when they're not feeling great. And they'll share that because they, but they'll only share that in a women environment. They don't tend to share it in a mixed environment, whereas a man would never sit in a group of men saying, oh, I'm having a really bad time of sleeping at the moment. You know, he, but basically he'd have a few drinks and say, yeah, where are we going to play golf or what are we going to do next? You know, watch the football or whatever. They don't like to admit that they're failing at something, whereas women, we will share it. We will share our emotions. We will share our feelings more openly in a group of women. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I find that too. And that's that's why I started the um, Abu Mentoring and, and Mastermind Group, because that's a group of women working together to get their books written. And it has a very different feel mm. to the mixed groups that I also mentor. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just that's just an aside. Um, but yes, I think you're absolutely right. Women, women sort of bond over problems and and um uncertainty and a lack of confidence sometimes and the bad things that happen while men kind of i suppose i, I don't know it's more the kind of you know look at me how great i am i mean again i'm not i'm not putting down men of course they don't just do that but there is a there is a different style isn't there um yeah. so so when women are sharing these stories their stories and you're encouraging them to go through what you would call in a novel or a film the plot arc um, of, of the ups and downs the hero's journey does it work for them to get um, across just to women or do men also you know mixed group the mixed environment <laughs> does it also work there as well 
I don't know. And I am doing a book of men's stories. And it was, oh. it, was it was like pulling teeth. And I was um, I mean, the, the gents have written a chapter. They've had their photo shoot, but we put it on hold because of lockdown, because I want it to be a big face to face event in, in aid of uh, Mind, the charity. It's it's an uh, internet. There is an International Men's Day in November yep. each year. Yep. And I wanted to launch it on International Men's Day at a big event. And we had to wait till we get the go ahead. So it may happen this year. I'm not sure. But the char- the book is in aid of, of Mind, the charity. And what it, what I wanted to do with the book was encourage men to speak openly about their journey and their mental health issues to inspire other men that it's okay to talk and it's good to talk so it's but it's been harder the women have been more open the women have have, and I got quite a few men shared their story and it looked like a cv and I went back to them I said yes but you know have you haven't you got any parents were you born (laughs) just did you just arrive you know were you born of aliens or did you have a family upbringing you know what did you aspire to be when you were a child nearly all of them wanted to be a footballer it's really bizarre they their goals and aspirations and yet pulling out the detail um, was really really hard getting these men to speak openly whereas the women probably share too much and you know you get chapters that are three times the length because obviously I put I collate all the chapters in that's just one of the things I do is collate the chapters into these books I've written four of them now um (laughs) too many to hold up but they all share the chapters so I say to the women start writing your story because you can share that anywhere you can share it in an awards application you can share it on stage as an inspirational talk or you can share it in an article a chapter or eventually go to somebody like like yourself Lucy and write your book or Absolutely. even if you're writing a business book share some elements of those experiences Definitely. in the book to show your expertise yeah and it's sort of it's about the learning journey isn't it because when you're mm. um, when you're sharing your story to build your business or to get more clients or whatever it is you need to meet them where they are at the moment looking for a solution to a problem and so if you share that you've also had that problem and through your own experience you found the solution to it that you can now offer to them they're much more likely to trust you it's interesting I was having this conversation this morning with somebody and I said you know the lady in question doesn't just talk the talk she's actually walked the walk so the clients she helps know that she's shared their experiences and that's so important when people buy into you you're by sharing that you've had these experiences one one key example I shared on social media um I've shared a couple of things on my LinkedIn page recently I shared that I was a judge for the business book awards and that had a phenomenal response oh good because <laughs> people like good news they like stories they like to know about things that you're, you're doing so I shared that but equally I shared a personal post um about how to communicate with me because I'm partially deaf and yeah, not a I lot saw of people that know Sandra that. Yeah. yes and that I- that post had nearly 13,000 views and so many comments because people said I never thought about the fact that wearing a mask meant it difficult for people that were hard of hearing and couldn't lip read and then so many people came forward and said I've got hearing loss too but I never really talk about it and it's an invisible disability so it was really interesting to see how by sharing a little bit of yourself maybe on a social media post can actually really really reach people that you didn't expect to reach but also reach your potential target audience as well yes yes that's fascinating and it does uh, you know I, I, it does make people engage with you in a in, and feel that they know you more personally as well doesn't mm-hmm. it which helps them to then say yeah I'd like to work with you because I know I can trust you yeah and you know you asked me about my personal brand and how I've, I've carried that through that's exactly what I've done. People have followed me wherever I've gone. So right from that first solicitor's practice in Birmingham, people, I started to build up a following. But when I moved to a Coventry practice, they started to follow me there. And then when wow. I set up my own practice with no clients, people followed me to that practice. So when I know it was no longer Sandra the solicitor and I started Woman Who, I'd already got that whole community. And those people that just naturally followed me on to the next thing and it's that's what your personal brand is I've built up Sandra Garlic um, obviously and now I've got the MBE bling on there but I've that's built great, that up yes. and you know it, it's made me stand out for lots of different reasons but I've built it into my story and I've built it into my journey uh, and and people like to see that journey and how it's all fit together 
yeah no that's that's really really very interesting so um so okay so we you need to get your story out there how do you sort of sort your story into one big overview story as it were and then different bits for it and how do you know if you're oversharing um and and when it's appropriate to say you know to, to talk about the personal stuff and when you should just stick to business is that is that part of the academy it um, is, teaching yeah. so I, I do a lot of teaching about that in the academy but what i do is i generate a template for the ladies to look from with some hints and tips really and i say to them you know never share anything that you wouldn't want to see on the front page of a newspaper and if in, if, in you, if in your gut it doesn't feel right, then it's not right to share it. And always be sensitive to other people and other past employers as well, because a lot of yeah. people have left employers, they've signed confidentiality agreements, they've moved on, they've fallen out with family members. You need to be really careful that you're not hurting somebody or that there's no potential there's my legal hat on here, no potential for any, um, you know, slanderous or libel or anything like that or, yes. or anything, because, you know, you mentioned something, it goes in print, that's it, it's in print and it's out there. Uh, and if it's found to you be untrue, or, or you can't take it back. So, um, so I, I screen all the chapters for that. Um, the other thing is that we, I say to them, if you're struggling to find your journey, go right back to when you were a child. Now, I say work in decades. Now I've got a lot more decades than a lot of people, um, but you know, go back in decades, go back to when you were a child, go back to when you were a teenager, go back to when you were in your twenties and look at the time, you know, what were your highs? What were your lows? What were your goals? What were your achievements? And then start to piece it together. And that's the easiest way to do it really, because once you've written it out, then actually you can pull out the elements and then feed in the lessons learned because nobody just wants to read your story they want there's got to be a message in there and that message has to run through right through it so the idea is to build up at the start and then take them through the journey but obviously the lessons you've learned along the way because then that makes it a valuable piece and the ladies that are writing their story it's got to have a business slant because it's yeah. got to have business lessons in there and all these ladies have either started a business or built up a career so what they're doing is they're saying how they got to where they are today the lessons they've learned the challenges they've had and now how they've overcome those challenges that's brilliant yes that's really really helpful um so um let's talk about awards as well but michaela asks how do people come to have an mbe sandra do people nominate you or how does it work well, this is one award you can't nominate yourself for. So what happens is somebody, and you don't know who, and they don't tell you who, nominates you for an MBE. And I understand the process takes around 18 months. So they nominate you, they approach business contacts, family, friends, and get them to write letters of recommendation. They complete a form. I don't know, I haven't seen it. I don't know what it entails. Um, and then suddenly you get a letter from um, the cabinet office saying that you've been nominated, but I didn't get my letter. Oh, <laughs> I got well, I'd moved in with my parents to care for my dad who was terminally ill, so I wasn't going home that often to pick up my post. And um, basically, <laughs> I uh, got a phone call one day as I was driving back from Sheffield, and uh, it was a very smart gentleman sounded on the phone and he said, uh, Is that Sandra Garlic speaking? And I, I said, Yes. He said, I'm from the cabinet office, and I thought, scam. Um, <laughs> he said, uh, have you received our letter? And I said, no. And I'm thinking, oh, God, what have I done? You know, yes. you're thinking, <laughs> you automatically think, oh, my yes. gosh, what have I done wrong? <laughs> and um, he said, uh, oh, well, you've been nominated for an MBE. And I thought, how wonderful. And, and I thought, oh, I said, oh, how lovely. And he said, can I have your email address? I thought, here we go. Here's a scam. He's going to ask me for money. Um, Anyway, I monitored my uh, every traffic light. I stopped that. I quickly looked at my email on my phone. Nothing. So I went straight to my house, got a big pile of posts, flicked through it and found a big white envelope. It was about this size. And, um, you know, it's sort of thick. It was really thick. And um, I, it's a cabinet office on the front. So I opened it and I'd missed the deadline. For oh, acceptance no. <laughs> because you have to say whether you're going to accept the honor because some people are against the honor system and don't like to accept yeah them. indeed so um i basically opened the envelope saw it saw i'd missed the deadline completed the form anyway because he must have phoned me because he was asking S emailed the form back to them and heard nothing 
Mm. absolutely nothing so I thought that's it then I I, I was te so tempted to tell my my dad because I thought if I tell him then at least I know he knows yeah and then yeah. if my dad dies then he, he knows that and then I thought but if I tell him and it doesn't happen then I've got his high hopes up so <laughs> yes. I, I decided not to tell him and then on the 27th of December that year it wasn't this December it's the year before um I was looking at my Facebook one night half past 10 and all the congratulations were popping up um and fantastic well done and it's I looked at the link and it was uh, announcing my MBE and that was the first thing I knew oh wow that's amazing so well Sandra that is a great story in itself it is. that is so good <laughs> Yeah, and it was it was for my services to women in business, which was oh, lovely because fantastic. it's something that I'm quite passionate about. So yeah, so that's my bit of bling. And again, this is an excellent um, example of how to power up your personal brand because yeah. I they wrote to me. Uh, uh, so the award I haven't been down to Buckingham Palace yet because the day of the awards was the day after my dad died so I couldn't oh, go and, sorry. and then um they postponed it and then they locked down they cancelled it so we've had a letter to say you can pick, collect your award in three ways you can either have it posted in an envelope to you you can have it um delivered by the local lord lieutenant at a local ceremony or you can come to Buckingham Palace but you could only bring one guest well, of course I'm going to go to Buckingham Palace because I'm thinking about the collateral that sits behind it. One, I get my photograph actually being presented with it. If it comes in the post, I don't. If it's presented locally, it's not the same as having the Queen or one of the royal family. I get to have a picture outside Buckingham Palace and there's professional photographers there. So I'm looking for the collateral because I'm thinking, how can I use this as a way to stand out? So I can do press releases. I can use the photography in my branding on my website. And it may sound quite callous, but I've been awarded that. And I'm actually going to make the most of that. And a lot of people forget about this with awards. When you're applying for an award, think about the marketing collateral and build that into your marketing strategy. Because there is so much collateral you can pick up through the journey and on the day itself um yeah. and that's the, that's there that doesn't just stop and it's how you use that collateral to make the most of it and maximize your brand and, and put yourself out there fantastic gosh that's such a yes thank you for asking that Michaela because that's that's given us a really good story and and um you know Sandra's lived experience so Sandra tell us also about um about your awards about the woman who awards and how how does that work so one of the reasons I set up the awards was there were so many awards ceremonies out there. I'd been to them. I'd sat there. You know, you're a finalist. You let them call out the names and then the winner gets to go up on stage. And the people who don't win anything just sort of sit there and feel a bit, oh, but you don't you get somebody comes along and stuffs a certificate in front of you. And that's it. That's your moment. So I felt that I wanted to give women a little bit more than that. One, I wanted to give them the confidence to enter awards when they'd never entered themselves for awards before. So because I don't judge my own awards, I mentor women through my community, through all my events um, and through the academy. And I say, look, this is how an awards process works. These are the types of awards you need to be looking for. But if you want to practice, have a go at my awards and then you feel the confidence to go and enter other awards, either in your trade or industry or at local um, you know, trade organisations or nationally. Um, and it gives women the confidence to do that because they've gone through a process and I handhold throughout the process and throughout the entry and then leading up to the interviews and you know all the ladies that enter my award that attend the event even if they haven't been a finalist get to go on stage they get to have their picture taken because I'm thinking constantly so when they enter they get a proud to be nominated logo so it doesn't matter if they've nominated themselves or nominated somebody else by somebody else but, but I also say if you nominate yourself don't be embarrassed about it because nobody knows you and your business better than you so as soon as they enter they get a proud to be nominated logo that they can use on their website they can use on their emails they can use on their social media so they're already elevating their personal brand and showing their credibility as a business and then the finalists are announced they get a finalist logo they can use and they attend a finalist interview where we take photographs at the finalists so again they're getting collateral they can use and then at the award ceremony the set itself 
not only does the winner get called on stage, but all the, the finalists get called on stage for photographs. And then the people that have entered get called on stage and they get a collateral from that as well because the photographs are released for them to use. They're on the website, they get shared on social media. So there's all this ongoing collateral constantly uh, for women to shout out about their successes. Even when we were online last year, we still managed to deliver it from a studio, still took the pictures of the women on the screen receiving their awards. And it's fantastic to have that and to be able to show that, um, not only from a awards business, but also for the women that enter themselves. That's that, that's that's such a generous award system. It's lovely, Sandra. Um, and I, I, you know, I kind of can't help feeling that that's a, a more um, female way. I mean, obviously, I know this is for women who, but it's it feels like a more female way of doing something, something more collaborative and inclusive, while <laughs> sort of men based awards are probably a bit more competitive and who's yeah, the actual yeah. winner. And um, yeah, no, and that's it, that's so good to hear. It is lovely on the day as well, because I've never seen a group of women who support other women so much. It doesn't really matter who wins. And you know, I'm the most non-competitive person you can ever wish to meet. And it really is a lovely feeling and the feeling of, of support when they see somebody win in their category and they don't, but they're still supporting them all the way through. And it's just lovely to see. Yes, that's great. So and what are you sort of built up a, a group, um, a kind of group community of all the um, entrants um, all the way through by the sound of it? Yes, over the years and people join the community and they stay there and past winners uh, take them, I say I take women on a journey. So they come to my network events, they enter the awards, they meet other women. They, there's so many collaborations that spin off from it. They end up doing business together, projects together. They become friends, but they stay in the community. Some go on and become judges themselves because they've sat in that chair and others decide they want to sponsor or partner and support in a different way. But I've got companies and, and, and businesses and women that have been with me since day one because they've grown themselves through the process and through the awards and through the community. That's that's such a again, that's such a great, a great story, Sandra, mm. really is. So so you said you were going to um, you were going to tell us some top visibility hacks. So what 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 are those then? What are the kind of what are some real kind of hacks that we can get through? OK, well, let's talk about social media. So social media, think about sharing, you know, those personal stories. Think about something personal. It doesn't all have to be, you know, what I have for breakfast, what I have for dinner. But if you can build that into a story, which is a lesson learned about business, people will engage more. Um, the other thing I do with social media, and I don't know how many people do this, they like and then move on or they just post and run. I engage with six posts before I post anything on any social media platform. So if I'm in a group, I like to engage with other posts, but on LinkedIn especially, I go on and my little rule to myself is right. And I don't just mean like a post or share it. I go in and comment because when you're commenting on other people's posts, that's raising your visibility. True. You know, recommendations, reviews, um, the new kudos on LinkedIn. If you leave kudos for somebody, if you go onto a, um, a PC and you click more, you can give kudos. That's a great way of because the person who receives a review recommendation or kudos thinks, oh, how lovely. And they shout yeah. out to everybody about it and they name you. So, you know, it's a great way of just lifting your profile just that little bit um starting your own group such as this one in abu circles you know it's a, a captive audience um so it's a great way to be posting and putting stuff out there um also you know think about where you can be speaking um quick wins the one to many principle so you can reach a lot more people if you're speaking to an audience. So think about what conferences are going to be coming up. They, we're going to be flooded with conferences now that online people are sick of being online. They want to meet people face to face. I held a face to face event my first a week last Friday uh, and people were clamoring to be there because wow. they wanted to be in a room with other women. They wanted to. We have men there as well, but it was predominantly women. Um, so think about those speaking opportunities and where you can be. And I'll share a little tip that I um that I 
um, did at that event shortly. Um, but yeah, host free events yourself. You know, that's a great way of, of attracting an audience to you um, and reach out to your trade organizations. And if you're a member of a trade organization, such as a chamber or the FSB or something similar, if you're a member, reach out and say, can I speak at one of your events? Because yeah. they're, they, they're always looking for speakers. Um, and it's about sharing your story. So think about, OK, well, I might not be ready to write my book yet, but I could share an article or I could comment in somebody else's book, because a lot of people who write books are looking for people research they're looking for people to comment they're looking for expert opinions so if if you you know talk to people build your community if somebody's writing a book you might be able to get a, a short paragraph in there as a commentary um think about writing articles think about sharing your chapter in somebody else's book um but there's lots of opportunities like that um so my visibility hacks really are tell and share stories um, there are lots of opportunities to share stories, uh, repurpose your content, as I've said. Um, try and drive traffic to your own website or your own I list. I actually came off again? Eventbrite and uh, I stopped using Amazon for, for my books. I know that's probably the wrong thing to say to you, Lucy. Um, <laughs> but <It's fine. laughs> I, I decided I was going to drive all the traffic to my own website, especially for my events. So I took everything off Eventbrite because I found that driving the traffic to my, to my website enabled me to build my list three times faster than pre-lockdown. Um, so that was a really useful thing. Um, sharing, rather than saying buy my stuff, try and tell a story on social media. Um, get your professional headshots updated regularly. Now I try and do mine every year. Um, because we do change, we do look a bit different, our hair colour changes, we're women, we dye our hair, um, you know, we do change our hairstyles, so get your professional, and, you know, be smiling to the camera, because now we're walking into a face-in-face -face environment, we're going to be in that situation where we're coming into contact with people again, um, and lastly, you know, remember, engage before you post, remember those reviews, and those who engage the most actually gain the most, and if I've got time, uh, Lucy, I know we've probably run over a little bit. No, could I fine. could I just share that story about oh, the, um, yeah, such a great the networking. networking story? Yes. Yeah, a lot of venues now are still going to be um, on restrictions. They're still thinking about social distancing, even when the relaxation comes in. So what I decided to do at my event a week last Friday, there were tables of six, and they couldn't move from their tables. So I put some little cards on every table just like these, they were only cheap. I got them from Amazon and I put some little envelopes and I invited and everyone to write letters to people on other tables. I put a guest list on everybody's table so they knew where they were sitting. And I had two ladies in sanitized gloves and uh, wearing masks who acted as post ladies. And it was so lovely to receive the little cards and messages in these envelopes um, from all around the room. And the speakers were inundated obviously with little messages. And it's a great way to network. You could pop your business card in there as well. And it worked brilliantly as a different way of networking in a new world. That's, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody loved that. And uh, yeah, no, it's just, just, clever to be original and people will remember your event because of that as well which mm -hmm. is which is which is also great no those are um, fantastic hacks so Michaela says brilliant tip um and also she and says also if you're kind enough to spend some time engaging with other people's stuff they're more likely to come and engage with yours um Claire says great tips Sandra thanks as well um so yeah no that's that's been absolutely absolutely fascinating so where where can people uh, what, what do you, what what should people do to kind to come and come on your academy and to be part Part of your awards and to be i mean the awards are coming up soon aren't they the awards there's only two weeks left to enter oh wow so they're open to any woman in business so i've got solopreneur categories that's for a woman sole director or sole trader now not many awards are, the, are aimed at solopreneurs um and then i've got categories for growing businesses as well startups um for women in uh tech you know stem categories uh, and international as well because since we've been online it's opened up a whole new world for people to trade internationally through zoom so uh, there are categories there there's two weeks left to enter um entry is free and uh, it's on womanwho.co.uk 
womanwho.co.uk we'll put that in the top of the post when we when we finish speaking that's that's fantastic and um yes so everybody definitely um lots of people here who should be entering those awards and um what about the academy sandra is that is, will they find that in the same in the same place yes the academy is there and there are two elements to the academy uh, i recognize a lot of people are starting out so there is an academy light where you just come in you get all the collaboration all the networking and all the learning but if you subscribe to the main academy, and I'd just like to say this is not a membership, it's a one-off subscription. Once you're in, you're in for life. Wow. Um, and you come into the academy. I run a Friday Zoom normally at one o'clock. Um, so we all time to yourself. Yeah, we all do. Um, <laughs> and I do obviously lives each week, motivational lives, but there's a lot of learning in there and um, opportunities. So the full academy membership gets the opportunity to share their story. And I'm a woman who, which is the annual publication they get to speak at my events and they get to share their story um, obviously online and in print um, they get extra mentoring for the awards they get lots of mentoring on business growth and I help them to find their story and to share it everywhere I do lots of PR as well so a lot of my ladies have been on radio um, and they get interviewed at my events as well oh that's absolutely brilliant and and also and then who gets to come in your your books your annual multi-author books who who gets to come in in that's those my, are those are your award winners or no they're, they're the academy ladies so right. the, that's one of the opportunities i create is that they learn how to find their story and then they have uh, practice sessions to share their story so they share it to the academy ladies first get feedback and build that keynote so that they can go anywhere and deliver an inspirational keynote whether that be educational or inspirational and then they hone that story down into a chapter and then it gets published in the book fantastic that's brilliant what a great process as well Oh, well, that's it's been absolutely um, wonderful to have you here, Sandra. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Those are brilliant hacks and really good advice and also wonderful stories. So um, it's, it's uh, all it, about the stories. People, it's all about the story. Yeah, people yeah. might not remember your name, but they'll always remember the stories you tell. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Sandra Garlic, MBE. Um, it's been really lovely to talk to you. And I do urge all of you to enter for Sandra's awards. Michaela's already put the links in the comments here and I'll put it up at the top as well. So brilliant, Sandra. And please um, come back and uh, I mean, come come and post in the group about the awards and, you know, what's happening, who's who's in, who's been, you know, whatever you want to do, share, do share with us because that will yeah. be great. Lovely. Thank you. Lovely. OK, well, thank you, Sandra. Thanks, everyone, for being here. It's uh, it's been great to have you and I'll uh, see you again next week. OK, bye, everyone. Bye.